do Eric's Guitar Amplifier Repair in California. My name is Eric. Today we will do a review of the Gibson Les Paul 1960s classic manufactured from 1990 through 2000. In this video series we will also discuss how to identically recreate the actual original vintage Gibson Les Paul from the 1960s. Thanks to modern manufacturing, we are capable of doing this at this time. Let's begin. I've been fortunate enough to have had five original vintage 1960 Les Paul guitars come across my test bench during a time when most musicians were playing striped Stratocasters and star-shaped guitars. The Les Pauls that came across my test bench changed my life forever. Each Les Paul that came across my test bench all had plain maple tops. All of the wood was old growth type and had long neck tenions. Approximately around 1989, Gibson had acquired a large batch of high quality old growth tone woods. Also, at the same time, the manufacturing director chose to use good manufacturing practices and their quality control, combining both quality woods and the updated quality control, Gibson was able to manufacture some of the best sounding guitars in their history between 1990 and 2000. Whether you chose the Gibson Custom, SG, or even the Studio, those guitars will sound fantastic. This is all due predominantly to the woods. However, there was a particular line of guitars manufactured by Gibson called the Gibson Les Paul Classic. The Classic had the identical measurements that I found on the five guitars that came across my test bench, the original vintage 1960 Les Pauls. Like the original 1960 Les Pauls, the 1960s Classics used high glue to assemble the neck joint, they used nitrocellulose lacquer to enclose the guitar, and they used the ABR1 where they have the post going through the wood. Also, you will find the majority of these Les Pauls have plain maple tops, and that's an important feature because the majority of the original vintage Les Pauls that I've seen in general, almost all of them have plain maple caps. Unfortunately, this is where the similarities end. Unlike the original Gibson Les Pauls, the classics have a short neck tenion also. The pickups and the wiring harness have nothing to do with the original. However, we can remedy this without issue, and here's how. Here we have a pristine example of a 1997 Les Paul Classic, manufactured in 1997. Specimen was purchased in Tennessee from Mr. Evans and sent out to me here in California. I want to thank Mr. Evans for sending a pristine, beautiful, plain top 1997, 1960s, Les Paul Classic. Here you can see that the maple top is a plain type. Uh, however, I was fortunate enough to get a little bit of um, quilt at the top, which is really nice. Here you see the post going through the wood, the ABR1 post going through the wood. This is an important feature found on the original vintage 1960 Les Pauls. A beautiful one-piece mahogany back. Very nice uh, pattern, wood pattern there. We also have the Cluson type tuners also found on the original 1960 Les Pauls. High caliber quality control on this particular example exceeding many of the historic Gibsons of today. Historic examples coming out of Gibson exceeding 7,000. This was purchased for less than 2,000. Here we can see the internal view of the cavity. Incorrect 
wiring harness, incorrect potentiometers, incorrect wiring diagram. This can be remedied by your local technician without issue. He'll, he or she will use the 1950s uh, wiring diagram. This will make a great improvement in the sound regardless of what pickups you use. I will show you the correct potentiometers and wiring harness in the next segment. This is the correct 1950s styled wiring diagram. paper and oil capacitors that will be used by your technician. And this is what the correct wiring should look like in a vintage Les Paul. Completed 1950s styled wiring using paper and oil capacitors. This is the potentiometer that your technician will most likely use. This is from Mojo Tone. It is a vintage styled potentiometer, 500K. And here is the wiring harness wire type that will be needed to recreate the 1960s Les Paul sound. Here we see a vintage 1960s long tenon neck style, a pristine neck routing in a 1960s classic. The 1960s classic used a 490R neck pickup and a 500T ceramic bridge pickup. Most production pickup companies now have and have had the original mechanical and electrical drawings from Seth Lover for the patent applied for pickup. Whether you choose Mojo Tone, Throwback, or Seymour Duncan, all of the pickups will be the exacting specifications for the patent applied for. I have a preference for the Seymour Duncan Seth Lover model. Seymour Duncan and Seth Lover worked together to create this particular pickup. The pickups are wound on the actual Gibson winding machine used in the 1950s and 60s. And frankly, Seymour lives down the street from me and his manufacturing plant is less than five minutes away drive from my house. And here we have the pickups installed. And here is the guitar assembled. I chose the 59 Seymour Duncan pickups for its screaming quality. And this came in as a blues set. I would recommend that you have your technician flip the Nick pickup magnet out of phase. Nickel hardware and T-top volume knobs as found on the original 1960s Gibsons. It is my understanding that the maple caps are old stock. Uh, these were set aside because of their non-flame characteristics. 
And here is the grotesquely oversized strap locks that I chose to protect my investment. The standard 1960s Les Paul classics are meant for the working musician and the studio artist. I do not consider these Les Pauls as collector's items. For the collector, I highly recommend that they look for the Les Paul Classic Premium Plus. There's also a Classic Premium Plus Historic, and here are some photos of those that are available. Side note, the black image, uh, black painted image with the high flame, it's very rare. As a matter of fact, there are no known um, collectors that have that particular uh, specimen. Eric's Guitar Amplifier Repair, helping musicians to perform better.